Hello! On this bright sunny morning, I'm in Greater Manchester, in the borough of Tameside, somewhere between Ashton under Lyne and Mosley. Now, some of my favourite walks in recent times have been those that have involved visiting hilltop monuments and towers, so I thought today I'd find another similar walk. All I've got to do now is find a tower. Well, well, I found one. This is Hearts Head Pike, but I'm going to go and do the walk now, and at the end of it, I'll come and explore this tower more thoroughly. From Hearts Head Pike, I began to walk down the path heading south. There were wonderful views all around me. To my left, I could see over the town of Mosley, with the spectacular hills of the Peak District beyond it. To my right, I could see across Ashton under Lyne and the city of Manchester, as well as Oldham. Reaching a stile at a farm track, I turned right. I descended to Pike View Farm. Turning left here, I followed a signpost for Knot Hill Reservoir. At the next signpost, I took a left towards the Hearts Head Inn. Dropping into a valley, I turned right to another signpost. Climbing the stile, I followed the path signposted for Knot Hill Reservoir.
Soon I reached Ashton Underline Golf Course, and at a way marker I turned right. Walking onto the golf course, I was a little unclear as to where the footpath went, so I just walked around the edge of the course. Thankfully, I soon found another way marker, directing me into a wood. The path then ran alongside a stream, with a culvert to my right. Arriving at Knott Hill Reservoir, I stopped to look over the water. Here I noticed a collection of memorials to two local teenage boys, Craig Finn, aged 19, and Lee Flanagan, aged 17, who had tragically drowned in the lake in January 2013. Moving on, I passed Knot Hill Farm. Here I turned off through a gate and followed the signpost for Hurst. At the bottom of the hill, I turned right, following the main path towards Hurst. Eventually, I came out onto Lees Road, which I followed to St Albans Avenue, turning left here, then along a footpath just before Holden Clough School. At the next signpost, I headed across the fields in the direction of Alt Hill Lane. I soon came to another way marker, directing me through the woods. I dropped down and crossed a wooden bridge over a stream. Climbing the other side of a very muddy path, I passed some houses at Lower Fold. I had some fine open views at this point. Reaching Alt Hill Road, I followed it to the very end, where it descended to the next interesting location. Well, I've now arrived at the perfect place where I can stop and eat my lunch. This is Park Bridge. Park Bridge is situated in the Medlock Valley by Ashton and Deline's border with Oldham. Samuel Lees Jr. founded the ironworks in 1786 on 14 perches of land rented from the Earl of Stamford. Originally producing raw iron, the ironworks were some of the largest in 19th century Tameside and one of the earliest ironworks in the Northwest. 
Samuel Lee's wife, Hannah, inherited ownership of the ironworks on her husband's death in 1804. Under Hannah Lee's, the ironworks were expanded, including the construction of a weir and a water power building on the River Medlock. The business was inherited by another four generations of the Lees family until the closure of the site. The ironworks started to decline when coal mining in the Medlock Valley ceased in 1887. The works finally closed in 1963. In 1975, the Medlock and Tame Valley Conservation Association opened the Park Bridge Museum to encourage interest in the historical significance of Park Bridge. In 1986, the museum became a visitor centre and in 1995 was renamed the Park Bridge Heritage Centre. From the Heritage Centre, I climbed the hill and walked through Park Bridge Village, which was built for the iron workers by the Lees family. At the end of the terrace, I turned right down Mill Brow, and as the road curved right, I turned left through a stile and cobbled entrance. Walking straight ahead, I passed an old steam hammer. Beyond that, I joined a path crossing a footbridge over the River Medlock. Turning left, I passed the ruined remains of Rosha New Pit and took the way marked path right uphill in the direction of Lees Road and Abbey Hills. From here, I got a good view of Rosha Vale. Rosha Vale was part of the Park Bridge Ironworks and is a wonderful example of how ex-industrial sites can be transformed with a little hard work and some time. The area now offers a beautiful setting for a pleasant walk. At the top of the hill, I crossed a stile and walked along the side of a ditch. The walk was easy to follow now, as all I had to do was follow the Tameside Trail way markers, which would eventually lead me back to where I had started my walk. Passing Fields Farm, I turned left off a farm track, signposted for Hartshead Pike, following the footpath to Lees Road. Crossing back over this fast and busy road, I took a footpath almost opposite towards Port Marne Farm. Just before reaching the farm, I went slightly right over a ditch up to a stile into a field. I walked along the right edge of the field and at the far corner, I turned left and slowly headed up towards Hart's Head Pike. Eventually the climb ended. After enjoying the views, I turned my attention to what was just ahead of me. Well, I've made it to the top finally. 
which means that I'm nearly at the end of my walk. So, as I said when I started this walk, I'm now going to have a thorough look at Hart's Head Pike. The name Hart's Head Pike generally refers to the tower, but it was originally the name of the hill itself. The pike is not the highest part of the hill, but its prominent position at 940 feet above sea level has been the site of a beacon or signalling station from early times. The circular grey two listed tower overlooks Ashton under Line, Mosley and Oldham. A tower was built on Hart's Head Pike in the early 18th century, possibly built partly of timber beams with lath and plaster walls, but ultimately seemed to have suffered from vandalism. It stood about 50 metres north of the present tower and is marked by a millstone. The tower was rebuilt in 1863 by local architect John Eaton, to commemorate the marriage of His Royal Highness Albert Edward to Princess Alexandra, replacing a building that had been there since 1751. An inscription stone reused in the tower's entrance reads, Look well at me before you go, and see you nothing at me throw. This pike was rebuilt by public contributions, Anno Domini 1751. In the 1930s, the tower was open to the public and contained a sweet shop, but it closed at the outbreak of the Second World War and the entrance to the tower was bricked up around 1950. The Pike is still a popular destination for walkers who come to enjoy the wide-ranging views and I could certainly appreciate that being here myself today. So Hartshead Pike is another location I've never visited before today. And as I always say at the end of all my walks, it's been another fantastic one. Another great walk to add to my list. Now the funny thing is, a few weeks ago when I actually first researched this walk for Hartshead Pike, it was actually only a matter of days afterwards that a friend of mine actually contacted me, a fellow walker, and said to me, have you ever done Hartshead Pike? <laughs> What a coincidence, because I'd never heard of it before. And within days of me actually finding it online, a friend actually mentions it to me. So even though I've actually decided to do this walk myself today, I would still like to acknowledge the fact that John Prince also suggested it to me as well. So hi, John, and thank you. <laughs>